Here's your word for the day from Calvary in Lake Havasu. Visit us on the web at calvaryaz.com. Good morning, Calvary. Happy Friday. Uh, I'm Pastor Chad. I'm here with your word for the day. Hope we're going to see you this weekend uh, as we head into Memorial Day weekend. If you're in town, drop in and worship with us. Hey, we're looking at the final chapter of King Saul's life, and, and we're looking at it because it reveals so much about David as he leads as king. Uh, so Saul is facing the Philistines. David had actually like gone over to the Philistines and was trying to help them, and he's ready to fight with them. And, and the kings of the Philistines were like, we don't trust him. What if he turns on us and stabs us in the back because he's an Israelite? So they send him away. And David did a bunch of heroic deeds, rescuing people and protecting villages and stuff like that. But, but same, uh, Saul goes into battle against the Philistines, and uh, it goes terribly. I mean, uh, Saul and his sons are all killed uh, in the battle. And news comes to David. And uh, when David heard that Saul was dead, he tore his clothes. It was a sign of extreme grief. Uh, and, and he was just broken by this. Uh, and then the guy who brought the news, who has said, yeah, hey, Saul was still, he was wounded, but he wasn't dead. And he asked me to kill him. And so I killed him so the enemies wouldn't torture him. Uh, and I took his crown and his armband and brought him to you. David has him killed. Uh, again, that's grief. That's his anger. You know, remember, David said you shouldn't touch God's anointed, and this guy did what David wouldn't. Thought David would be happy, kind of misread the situation, cost him his life. And then uh, David laments. In 2 Samuel chapter 1, there is a, a lament from David about Saul and Jonathan, and he says, says, how the mighty have fallen. Now, notice something. David grieves the deaths of his king, Saul, and his friend, Jonathan. He doesn't rejoice that the man who tried to kill him for years is now dead. Isn't that amazing? He doesn't breathe a sigh of relief. He doesn't go, good, that's what he deserves. He grieves, even though Saul tried to cause him harm and kill him, with, when David was completely innocent. And see, this reveals David's heart, because it shows us that David's heart is not bitter at all towards Saul. Isn't that, isn't that amazing? Because you would think he would be so angry that he would rejoice in the destruction of his enemy. So how do we get like David? How do we protect our hearts from getting bitter and angry and unforgiving? Uh, the first thing is, like David, recognize God's authority. Uh, he just knew God was in control and he could trust God. Uh, Maybe you want to learn the refrain from Job chapter 1 when Job hears the news that his family has been wiped out and he's lost all his wealth and he says this, the Lord gives and the Lord takes away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Trust God. So recognize God's authority and then recognize God's blessings in your life. Uh, when we recognize how much we're blessed and that we don't deserve all those blessings, it, it fills us with gratitude. When we look at what we don't have and we complain about what we don't have, it leads to discontent, and discontent leads to bitterness. So um, recognize God's authority, recognize God's blessings, and then enter into the discipline of praying for your enemies. Look, if you've been listening, you've heard me quote Matthew 5 a whole bunch. Jesus said, love your neighbor. Or you've heard it said, love your neighbor and hate your enemy. I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. Listen, that is an instruction on how we can avoid bitterness in our lives because we need to pray for those people who are trying to hurt us. Or pray for those people who have hurt us. And, and not pray for their destruction, but pray for them to discover the grace of God and the love of God and the healing of God in their lives. Because when we pray for them to be healed, when we pray for them to discover that God loves them and wants to change their lives, it allows us to let go of the bitterness and the anger and the discontent and to find joy and contentment in Christ. If we don't do that discipline, uh, the bitterness may sneak up on us. And when we hear about our enemies being struck down, we might rejoice instead of grieve. Uh, but keep praying for your enemies until your heart is good. Keep rejoicing in God's authority and in his blessings. And like David, you'll be able to uh, respond in, with a heart after God's own heart. I hope that helps. hope that encourages you. And I hope you have a great day.